In this video, I will talk about time series ARIMA models example. Before you watch this video, please make sure that you have watched my other video called time series ARIMA models and you can go to the website and find the handout and more information. Just click on the link below the video to go to the website. So this is the example that we will consider. We have time series data on PPI, the producer price index, and data are quarterly data from 1960 to 2002. And as summary statistic, the mean for the dependent Y variable is 64 and the mean for the difference is uh, 0.464. And here are the couple graphs that we have in Stata. This is how the original variable looks like. And from what I can tell, that variable does not look stationary. This variable, this is the difference variable, delta PPI or delta Y, that looks uh, more stationary and that's calculated as the difference between this period and the last period. And that looks more stationary, uh, you know, it's not increasing or decreasing, but the variance increases over time. Uh, but it looks like this using the difference variable is more preferable than using the original variable. So here are the same graphs in R, the software R, and we see the same uh, trends, of course. And then this is the same graphs in, in SAS. Okay. So the next thing that we can do is uh, do uh, the official Dickey Fuller test for stationarity. And to do that, we are running several regressions. The basic one on the original variable is to calculate delta yt, which is the difference of y and the previous period y, or d dot y, on the lagged value of y, yt minus 1, or the first lag of y. And um, and then um, see whether or not this coefficient here is significant. So the test statistic is basically looking at the uh, test statistic for the coefficient on the lag variable. And here is minus 0.26. And this is the p-value for, for significant difference from zero. In um, Stata and SAS, they're very different. I don't know why. And um, here... Our conclusion is that this is not significantly different uh, from zero and therefore the variable is not stationary. So remember when you have a non-significant coefficient, you have that the variable is not stationary, therefore we need to difference it. So um, as one more test that we have here, we can also do the Dickey Fuller test on the original variable, but when we also include a trend. And the trend is here. Uh, we have this coefficient, that's not significant. And so basically the results are very similar. Again, this, this is the most important coefficient that we're looking at. This is the test statistic. Um, minus uh, point, uh, point 0.793. This one is uh, not significantly different than zero uh, and therefore uh, the variable is also not uh, uh, trend stationary. So now we can look at the difference variable and this is the delta delta yt or d2 of, of y because it's difference twice now and we can look at the coefficient now on the length uh, variable, but because the here we have we're dealing with the difference variable, that one also has to be different. So this is now delta y t minus one, and we see a coefficient here of minus point forty four. And the question is, is it significantly different than zero? So the test statistic is minus six point eighty six, and the p value is very small. Therefore, we have that the difference variable is stationary. So we have stationarity based on this um, p-value. So again, when we have significance, um, this is when we've done enough differencing and the, the variable is stationary. So based on, the conclusion, based on the conclusions from these tests, what I'm 
deciding is that we should not be using ARIMA models in levels, we should be using ARIMA models in differences. So we need to use the differences of uh, d equals 1 uh, of first order in the ARIMA models. So the next thing that we can do is the correlograms and the ACF and PACF. And here I have copied these from Stata. We have the original variable and the difference variable. And on the original variables, here are the lags, and here's the ACF, and here's the PACF. And one thing we're noticing is the very, very slow decay on the ACF, again indicating non-stationarity. And here we have very strong first lag, and then, uh, or maybe second, and then everything else cuts off. On the difference variable, we see now a decaying function for the ACF. That's good. Uh, and then we see the PACF a very significant first lag and then not so much significance. So uh, that probably indicates an AR process. So here are the ACF and PACF of the original variable. So uh, the numbers that I showed you on the previous slide are now graphically displayed. And again, see this, the very slow decay here? Uh, that indicates non-stationarity. And here we have one, maybe two significant legs, and then everything else cuts off. Um, so this is um, the output from R. That's how it looks like. Here again, see very slow decay. And this is um, one very strong lag, and then nothing afterward. And these are the output from SAS. So you basically have, that's the original variable. This is the ACF, uh, I'm looking at the ACF here, very slow decay and very strong first lag on the PACF and nothing afterward. So again, um, we have non-stationarity of the original variable. Now, if we look at the ACF and the PACF of the difference variable, um, look at how we have a very nice um, uh, slow decay, uh, uh, very nice, well, more rapid decay of the uh, of these correlations here. And here we have uh, one significant uh, lag, and then everything else is is close to zero. So this is the state output. This is the output from R, indicating basically the same story. So for the difference variable, what we are concluding is that the ACF tails off, you see like how it comes down, and the PACF cuts off after the first lag. So if we compare this to the theoretical um, ACF and PACF that I talked about in the time series ARIMA model, the theory part of uh, that video, um, we could probably conclude that we need to use an AR1 model. So this is the difference variable in SAS, and again, the ACF is right here, and the PACF is right here with a very strong first leg. Okay, so now let's estimate all the possible ARIMA models. I usually like to play with the data and estimate a lot of them and then decide which one to use for the paper. So we know that the variable is not stationary. The dickey fluor test said that, and we also looked at the, sta uh, the ACF and PACF, and both of them said that it's not stationary. But I included this, this first four models uh, in the um, original uh, variable. So remember on an ARIMA model, the first one indicates the order, the P, the order of the autoregressive, then it's D, the difference, whether or not the, the variable is differenced, and then it's Q, the order of the MA process. So here, when we have zero in the middle, these are all the original variable. Uh, and so this is basically an AR1 process uh, with no moving average components and this is an AR2, and then we have an MA1 process, and this is an AR1 and MA1, or ARMA11 process. Okay, so again, we're looking at these uh, coefficients. This is the first lag on the, um, on the autoregressive part. So the dependent variable here is YT, and here we have 
yt minus 1. And look at what happens if we see uh, this coefficient right here is very, very close to 1. Again, indicates non-stationarity. Um, so, and you know, you have everything significant, but we really shouldn't be using this model. So I'm going to concentrate now on, on these models here where we have, this is the difference variable. And um, here we have, um, instead of having y as the dependent variable, we have delta y because of the one in the middle. It's an integrated of order one. Okay. So um, the first uh, the first model here is in the AR1 process on the on the difference variable, and we have some significance on the first lag. Then I've estimated here the MA1 process again significance and ARMA11 both significance, and then I put three lags on the MA and here are two lags on the AR and three on the MA. So now we're looking at all of these and so which model should we pick as a final model? So there are two guidances. The first one is to look at the significance of the coefficients. And I'm, I'm looking at them like I probably would not use this one because it's just too much insignificance on here. But the rest of the models kind of look okay. I will not use a model that doesn't have an AR1 in it because of the ACF and PACF that we looked at. We concluded that it needs to be a 1-1. One, one. So we're missing a significant lag here. I wouldn't go with this model. So, okay. So now of these two, which one would I pick? And a guidance is that you usually want to go with the uh, AIC and BIC. The lowest, the lower, the better because it means that you could capture good fit with very few parameters, which is good. We want to go with the simplest possible model. So I'm looking at these. I personally would recommend this one because it's very parsimonious. It has the AR component and the MA. Um, but this one is also a good choice. I mean, it has two legs on the um, AR and three on the MA and this one is significant, the third one. So that may be a good choice. So again, this is more an art than a science at this point, which one you would include in the paper. So you may even include both of them for the paper. Now, um, another topic that we can talk about is forecasting in, in R. And this is that after we estimate the model, we can use a prediction for the future. And so here, after we estimate an ARIMA 101, we can further predict uh, the model here. And you see like this is the prediction and this is the confidence interval around it. And on the difference variable, we can again use a prediction. You see like how the variance is very large. So you have the prediction here and the confidence interval is much wider on that. So that's all I had for um, time series, the RIMA model, the example. Now next, select your software and let's uh, go over the programs uh, in the next videos.